Welcome to another. I'm just kidding. That's you. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of At the Bar Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Mike. With me today is a schmuck over here across the table. Language is not a problem, John. So feel free to. Oh yeah, say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. And also, right about right about there. That's yeah. where you want to be. Yeah, you want to get okay. close. Makes it easier for the me. The schmuck. That'd be the me. The schmuck Hollywood. across the table, Hollywood. What's up? This is our number two stop in our SoFlo Summer Brewery tour. Still wearing the Hawaiian. Still wearing the Hawaiian. I'm glad. I'm glad you're still sober. <laughs> As everyone kind of smirks. <laughs> sober. <laughs> sober ish. <laughs> yeah. And next to Jeff, we have Darren the house. What's up, How's Darren? Go, guys. And then next to Jeff, on the other side, we have Red Dave. What's up, guys? And I call him Red Dave because there's a lot of other Daves I know, but that's the only Dave with the red hair. Yeah, we've had, <laughs> <laughs> we've had four mics, but nobody's had any qualifying thing. Yeah. We've had one Dave, but be, just because he's a ginger, he's Red Dave. He's Red Dave. And then our special guest, John from Lauder Ale. Hi, What's guys. going on, John? How you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm sweating, but I'm good. So, we're here in Lauder Ale here in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Say that fast, Jeff. Lauderdale and Fort Lauderdale. Very good. They're pretty good. Yeah. Very you guys good. think I'm drunk. I keep telling you I'm not drunk. Okay. I told you that. So we're here in Fort Lauderdale by the airport here at Lauder Ale. I'm a, I'm gonna fuck that up one throughout this. I'll probably go fuck it up once. That's all right. We'll That's just okay. do Miami Brewing. <laughs> Let's do that. So John we'll, we'll dub it. <laughs> so John, you're here, you're a special guest. You've been kind enough to invite us and and sit with us and listen to our dumbasses for the last hour bother you no it's great to have you guys <laughs> okay, here thank you <laughs> we appreciate it so um tell us a little bit about lauder ale well we opened about two years ago um there was two owners joey farrell and kyle jones and they were friends for quite a few years and they loved craft beer and they wanted to get into the craft beer so they sat down and said why don't we open a brewery mm-hmm. so upon that they started to homebrew they had never homebrewed before and they got some of the basics down and got some pretty good recipes one of the porter the saison the saison's the great the ipa yeah. and the smokestack stout so they put this whole plan together they raised some money and they opened a one barrel of brewery so the night before they opened, they <laughs> called me in and wanted to sample some of my home brew that I'd, I'd met them at the uh, Fort Lauderdale area brewers. Right. And so. <laughs> Excuse Jeff being a fat ass over there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to steal some fries. Hey, let me get some of your chicken. Over. I tried to steal a fry. It was already on his fork, and I couldn't pick it up because they took the whole fork with me. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry so, for the distraction. So, so <laughs> Back to them calling Continue. you. Yeah. They called oh, no, you. That's fine. So they, they called me in. They, they sampled some of the homebrew that I had on hand, and that day they asked me if I wanted to brew with them or for them. So it was just an obvious yes. And, you know, I told him I had a, a full-time job. I was a jet engine mechanic for 20 years. Oh, wow. So I couldn't just walk away with no prospects, you know. Right, um, right. I got bills to pay and stuff. Absolutely. So for about a year, I worked here part-time. And once I started seeing some of the three-barrel system come in, the business was growing, um, I decided to make the move and do it full-time. Take the, you know, jump the ship and go from one to the other. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, how many times in your life do you get to to totally change something that you do and and still be? Uh, it's it's scary. Yeah, it's it it, really, it was yeah. it, it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, my mm-hmm. wife's fantastic. Um, she was the one who got me my first homebrew kit. All right, uh, for All right. Val- yeah. for Valentine's Day. Nice, nice. <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a good that's a damn winner. Wife. Yeah, that is, like, that's, that's a awesome. keeper. She is. I'm gonna plug this one in just because it's hilarious. My old roommate got his fiance, now wife, for Christmas a homebrew kit. She probably hated it. No, she she enjoyed it. She just didn't use it as much as he did. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so he got but it for other, himself. Which, which, that's, which, like, that's also a really smart play. Which yeah. the family gives him shit every time. They're like, 
You're going to get her another homebrew kit or something? <laughs> well, 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 that's kind of like when you give your wife lingerie or your girlfriend yeah, lingerie. Exactly. It's, it's pretty much it's, for it's you. It's for you. you. <laughs> yeah. It's for yeah. You. Oh, yeah. It's definitely You're for the you. wheel right now, you know? Yeah. Who's the winner in that scenario? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you bought, they, you, you, you jumped the ship from once they started to expand and, and then they made that kind of like initial effort of, you know, this is kind of like a, the real deal. I'm going to leave what I've been doing for X amount of years to brewing beer professionally. Yeah. And it's so far it's, it's worked out. So for the last just over a year, I've been working full time here. Nice. And awesome. we are growing almost month by month. Uh, new equipment, bigger equipment, bigger fermenters. Um, business is good as far as I know. I'm not really on that end of the business. But, right. Nothing but um, green. <laughs> but but as, as far as I see, you know, beer is sure. being consumed sure so that that's a good thing for us sure um well, that's your end of the business yeah that's put my end is, is <laughs> making the beer, put something so. out that people are going to drink and then and the rest is you know on them so mm -hmm. yeah you're you're doing your job extremely well right thank you so you're you're the head brewer here at lauder Ale, correct? yes okay i forgot to include that in the intro it's all right you know, we don't rehearse amateur. this stuff yeah no, I'm amateur. amateur i don't know how we still do this <laughs> like we don't rehearse anything <laughs> so what kind of brought you in you started off at at home brewing correct correct so what kind of made you go from not home brewing to home brewing well it was i came from connecticut and i moved down here in 98 99 somewhere around there and at that time connecticut had a big micro brew burst so you could get craft beer up there better than you can get it here now so when i came down here it was it was hard to find a good craft beer couldn't even get yingling at a bar <sighs> exactly and that's so, that still is i mean it's, it's not still, it's gotten better but it's still there it's, it's still, still we're, hard we're to behind find. the florida's curve. always behind everybody we're <laughs> way behind the curve. permanently but, on vacation <laughs> at least so, yingling is available at least, so right? when yingling i came down here i i had a i <laughs> A friend of mine who my wife works with and really nice guy he loved his craft beer and we kind of got together and we would find little places that would sell some craft beer and we would just sit around and drink it sure so we would critique it and I guess my wife got kind of fed up with that so <laughs> she got me the homebrew kit and literally said if you think you can do better Try. Here, go do it. <laughs> That's awesome. I so, dig it. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, I like the gift, and then I like the like challenge. Yeah, like and the, it really like, was. Here's a gift. You're the best, but also do better. <laughs> <laughs> you like, want to critique? Do better than them. Yeah. I like it. Don't, it's a challenge, don't, don't and that be a critic. that shit be, feasts. Be the one doing it. Yeah, that you know? feeds Absolutely. people, man. Like that. That would drive me nuts if my if my wife told me like. You think you can do better? Do better. I'd be like, I'll, I'm gonna fucking do better then. You know, like you're that, damn right. Woman. But on top of it, she's not even a, a beer drinker. Oh, so then you got to even impress. So a I have to drinker. make her. There you go. And have you gotten she, her into beer? Oh yeah, oh yeah. She she is that um, why the saison's so good? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she likes uh, some of my stouts. Nice. And um, wow, she's dark yeah. malt her, woman. Yeah. Yeah. Love her already. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's 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 the chocolate. Yeah, you know, uh, you away. it's the chocolate <laughs> thing. So that's cool. That most wives are like, you drink too much. You're yeah, yeah. Going, eh, don't you drink too much. Brewing uh, beer? Are you serious? You've gotten fat, but now it's like, yeah. hey, fat. Your wife fat was is like, cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got the dad bod right here. Dad bods are in. Yeah. All right. Well, your wife just like Why do you threw think it I'm at you. A Hawaiian. <laughs> yeah, because you're skinny, Jeff. <laughs> your wife threw it at, and like that's something I've never heard before. Like ever of you know a, a spouse you know encouraging you to brew beer at the house mm -hmm. and to you know if you think you can do better do it yep and that's the first time i've ever heard a story like that with all the breweries and brewers we've sat down with yep. and talked to and whether they're home brewers or professional like none of them are like oh yeah my wife just gave me a kit and we're just like do it and it, it wasn't even really on my radar yeah. to, to do it you know i didn't know anything about it learned as much as i could and then it got to the point where 
you know, I started in my kitchen and I got to the point where she doesn't even like the smell of the the mash or the boil or right. anything. That's my so that's the best part, in my opinion. Smell yeah. 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 It's the real pungent. Part, yeah. I get it. I mean, I get it. It, it, it has it, an odor. It has a, yeah, unless it, you're in the beer. beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. If you're in beer, unless you're in beer, like that's a pungent smell. I go to a brewery side. Tequesta Brewing is one of them. You go in, it's a small place, and they brew it all in the in the tap room, and mm-hmm. it's you smell it all the whole time you're there, whether they're brewing or not. Over the weekend, they're not brewing, and you, and you smell still, it every yeah. single time. But I love it because I'm into craft beer. Oh yeah, you know, there's people who probably don't love it, you but know? it's a very distinct, it's very smell. distinct, and mm-hmm. it's very pungent. It's very in your face, and I can see it. Yeah. You know, I can see why people would be offended by it. I think it's amazing so. so so then she asked me is there any way you can move this outside and you're like Hell i was yeah. like yes i've done my research <laughs> on yeah, that good. too yeah. i've so, already looked into it yeah. bigger so, system what? so for for birthday christmas whatever anniversary says, yeah, whatever whatever <laughs> holiday Anything. it was what, what do you want sunday and i said well <laughs> I, I need a new mash ton or i need a boil kettle or i need a bigger burner or i need something and it was all just piece together on stuff that that I did research on and stuff sure. that I looked into yeah. and build my own system God. and it came out to before I came here I was brewing 20 gallons a month and I had a chest freezer could uh, ferment about 40 gallons it's at like a time the homebrew premium setup it was <laughs> yeah. it was it really is yeah. and like people come over and they take pictures and, yeah. and and see how it's set up and then it's not just you know what you can buy it's it's what works for you even at a brewery it's what works for you in your space and what you have and what you can work with and the money you have too oh yeah so i was fortunate at that time i was making quite a bit of money turning wrenches so it was <laughs> not a bad deal yeah, yeah yeah that's awesome that's such unique i like i like that story a lot so unique yeah and, and different oh absolutely it's it's incredible it's different than anything we've heard from a head brewer yet. yeah yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, a lot of the times it's like, oh, I just got a bunch of investors, and we just opened a place. Yeah, and, I was home brewing for like yeah. I was home brewing for years, and then you know, my stuff found wasn't me. good, so I just hired somebody. And we've heard that. We've we, heard that. We have heard that. We've heard I was a home brewer <laughs> for years, and you know, somebody found me, and I decided to take over. Yeah, you know, but that's it, this is the first like true like we found we we found out something I love story like. I didn't know I was homebrewing, and then I right. found out I love it. Oh, I I was in it feet first. I mean, I, I did a lot of experimentation with hops at first because I just had the extract brewing. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of hops, and then when I went to all grain, I started experimenting with grains, and then I just finalized like all my recipes, and I could reproduce almost with my eyes closed. Nice. And <laughs> then I started experimenting with yeasts. And that was when it like really that took it in, in a whole nother in. other direction. <laughs> yeah. so so, that's like that's like Doc Brown, mad scientist kind of <laughs> stuff, you know. So where would you say that you get your inspiration for your beers as far as like, you know, there's people who go culinary, there's people who go beer styles, there's people who go just, you know, I want to hit style perfectly. Where do you think your inspiration comes from for brewing? I like to hit a classic style, um, whatever style it is and try to brew it traditionally the way that they did um we even go so far as use an ro system and then we rebuild our water uh to the water profile um so we we try to build it everything from the water up and and then if we come out with a good beer sometimes we'll treat it Mm -hmm. you know right you you gotta get bored with the same beers customers get bored with the same beers i like my traditional classic styles is is where i'm at but i like doing some of that weird stuff i I like doing the treatments to beers i like doing that kind of stuff and and the feedback we get from the customers is is we like we like weird beers on this show obviously love weird beers yeah Yeah. no i can tell that because you had i've had a handful of your beers now we each did a flight so we've had sample a couple a handful nine or ten of the beers or eight or nine or whatever it is but we've sampled a bunch of them and, and stylistically, you're on point with what you're trying to do. So you're you're classically what whatever the style is, you're trying to hit it, and you're doing a great job of doing that. Thank you. Um, and then you have that we you have those few weird beers that just mm-hmm. kind of you know break break the mold, and you go in and you do that coconut porter that is is phenomenal, and then you do that El Nino, that spicy what what style? The is that? La Nina. Yeah. 
La Nina. La Nina. Not El Nino. No. Ah. La, La, La Nina. Nina. So is like El Nino's habanero. wife. The mango right. habanero. Mango habanero is the phenomenal. Is the base of that. El, El Nino, Nino is, 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 the, the, is base the base blonde. El Nino okay, base all right. Okay, I'm sorry, I misspoke. <laughs> That's okay. La Happens Nina all the time. <laughs> is very is it's good. It's spicy, I and mean, we know from the show that I love Ghostface Killer. I love my uh, spicy beers, and, and you kind of broke the mold. You went out outside of what you would normally do as far as hitting style, and you went and did something different with it. Right. So, you 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 know, I, I was interested to see what your you know what you brew based on and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish and and stylistically you're hitting it so you're already doing a great job thank you yeah for sure um what you what do you think separates because i like talking to you know microbreweries that maybe aren't as big as some of the giants here in 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 florida right like the three daughters cigar city funky buddhas right so what do you think makes lauder ale different than maybe those bigger names those more popular names well i think even with a with a smaller brewery uh versus a bigger one you get more of that handcrafted thing and, and there's nothing wrong with going bigger i mean we everybody always wants to go get there we want everybody wants to go bigger, right? wants to go bigger <laughs> right? yeah. you, you know but I, but i think you get that um like here we we actually turn valves and you know the the beer comes out different if one day my hand is a little heavy you know, I, I can actually lose some ABV. Sure. Um, everything is done by hand. So I, I think you get that. It's a, it's almost like grandma's cooking versus Stouffer's. You know, you can get the same two lasagnas next to each other, but grandma's is always going to be better. Yeah, the best. Um, well, it, it just has that, that, that home kind of feel to it. It's not always better, it's just always that home feel to it. That's what I think craft beer is really is – it should be about is, is that – you know, it's done by your neighbor who lives down the street at the brewery down the street. He's there sweating, working 10 hours a day, mm-hmm. pulling this, you know, transferring this to that, like, you know, kegging it, whatever. And, and a lot of this stuff is very, is very automated, which has its own benefit, has its own True. positive to it. But like there's like you like you just said, like grandma's cooking to, to Stouffer's, like there's something different about it being hand done than being automated. And I think that having it hand done is more respectable for me than having a machine do it. And like, to me, that's what craft beer is more means more to me is that I meet the guy, you who, and, and you know, your, your assistant brewer who actually are there sweating, standing in 110 degree, you know, weather, <laughs> right, right. turning this, adding this, doing it all by hand instead of just putting it in the machine and the machine does it the exact same way. Every single time. Right. Every single time. That right. that is one thing. If the home brewers know, it, it's getting repeatability out of your beers. Home brewing. So when we came here, it was I had to learn a new system, a one barrel system, and now a three barrel system. So it was trying to repeat that same flavor over every and over single and over. time without every a machine. Day. Every day, yeah. every time we do it. And that's an art in itself. Sometimes it's we hard. sometimes we don't brew a beer for six months, so it's like, well, do I remember how to do this? But right. as long as you keep your processes pretty much the same from beer to beer, yeah, um, then then everything should come. I think out. that's a talent in itself is being able to repeat that over and yeah. over and over again, getting that consistency and not having to rely on a computer to do it for you. So, anything else anyone wants to say? No, I mean it's it's tough. It's tough when it's everything nowadays. I mean. I sit at Wob and I'm in the kitchen and I can't turn the dishwasher on because my thumbprint isn't hot enough to hit the push button instead of an actual button. You know, everything's <laughs> automated. It has to actually register that there's a th- it's a touch screen. So Is it's that like really? Oh yeah, dude, I have, you I've never used I hit the, the I hit the fucking button like 10 times and it doesn't turn on. <laughs> it's you know, uh, but it's it, it, he, has, he has a biometric and, uh, uh, <laughs> dishwasher. And, and you have so, a so if you go dude, up and you try to turn his on, it won't turn on. We're talking about like I, <laughs> iPhones. With, this isn't Jeff. <laughs> iPhones with thumbprints. You know, please like, back away dude, from the dishwasher. Of course, yeah. of course, there's a Stop billion the things that make things streamlined, but does it make it better or does it make it streamlined? True. You know, um, I love I love home cooked food. I love the fact that. Your beer maybe doesn't taste exactly the same every time you come in. And that's, and you know what? Like, repeatability is very important. I've tried a handful of home brews. 
um, where I've questioned the repeatability of the recipe because mm-hmm. there's some things that just are too, too, you know, too in different depth, temperatures too can dip, go you up. Know, ABVs can every, go there's up. There's so many things um, that can change. And alphas on the on the bitterness can go up. There's been insane complex homebrews that I've tried, and I'm like, how complex can you actually make a homebrew repeatably? You know, and and I've tried those things, and I've said. I don't know if this is a repeatable recipe or not. And there's been times where the homebrewer is like, oh, it's absolutely repeatable. We could do this a hundred times. Or there's been times where like, you know, we struck gold and we, we hit it where we, but to do that on a production level and try to make your beers hit every time is very challenging, especially when you can't measure out with a digital, everything, mm-hmm. a digital scale, digital malt build. I mean, nowadays everybody's just pushing buttons and the, the malt falls in and we got the right malt and now we got this. And it's like, it's hard same to build volume of water, right? Same exact temperature of water and water. I mean, I mean water in Florida creates its own, you know, its own challenges. We have very hard water. It, I think it plays very well to dark beers. Personally, that's mm-hmm. my opinion. Which is also funny um, because we're in Florida. Florida, Florida, <laughs> Florida, notoriously, everybody wants to do IPAs and light summer beers. But I've always said and on the show multiple times, I think that Florida water plays to dark beers very well. That's at, at my house. I don't filter. I have a filter for my for my house, you know, water filter mm-hmm. system, but I don't treat. And it's funny you say that most of my darker beers, anything from red, brown, porter, stout, even to Belgians, they, they come out just way better. Way better than the IPAs. I don't know what it. I, I mean, it's that hard water, but that the mm-hmm. IPA it, it doesn't it doesn't play as well. It, no, it doesn't. Florida. It it it. There's something in the water that just takes away from the hop character. But when you're talking about on a brewery that doesn't have all the digital and all the crazy equipment to treat your own water is already a challenge. Sure. And then you're going to do that, and then you're going to take that water, and then you're going to do all the other things that you have to measure on your own. Mm-hmm. And try to repeat a beer over and over again with all those variables is very tough and and to do it well which you guys have been been doing and I've, we, we've heard about you up in orlando so you're clearly doing it very well wow. um yeah. you know it, it's tough and i you know you're doing a great job so thank you so uh, before we go into section two here anything laurel has coming up that you want to kind of push out there any kind of expansions or, or festivals or any upcoming events that Lauderdale has in the future? Well, we have our two year anniversary on July 30th and it's open to the public. Uh, we also do a mug club. Um, so we get a, you can purchase a 20 ounce mug with your name on it. You get a t-shirt. I don't know pricing or anything like that. <laughs> um, but like anything that we have on the board, even if we serve it, uh, typically is a 10 ounce. If you come in and you, and you buy the mug, you can get that same beer in the 20 ounce mug for the same price as on the board. So mug club, kind of. yep. mug club. Yeah, 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 that's what it is, mug club. Uh, we call it Captain's Club here. Nice. Uh, nice. Is that so. any day of the week? Uh, no, only on our anniversary. Oh, okay. okay. That's available. Say, that's... And, I, and I think it's limited. <laughs> yeah, I would be real drunk every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's limited to the, uh, uh, the limited number of people. Sure. Limited number. Um, I think that's about it that's coming up right now. You guys are expanding, correct? Yes, we're I know we, we might have touched on it on the show, but definitely in the, the Tory Turkestan that you're definitely expanding. Yes, uh, it's in the works to get, I believe, four more seven-barrel fermenters. Uh, awesome. We run a three-barrel brew house right now, so we're looking into pretty much double batching awesome. uh, almost every day. One of the things that we have is with an open brewery and tap room, we can't brew when we're open right now because our hoses run across the tap room, so we're looking into different ways to, to run them through the back so oh, we can oh. actually brew when we're open. It, it's, it's just one of the, the growing things yeah, that we have here for sure so um i show you where it showed you guys where the brew house was and then where the fermenters were yeah. so we have to <laughs> yeah. run a hose right across 15 feet apart <laughs> yeah we <laughs> have to run a hose right across the tap room so we don't want the bartenders tripping over hoses of course not stuff yeah. like that uh hot beer running uh near customers and stuff like that so i mean you guys yeah you have the the space to expand it's just a matter of semantics of how you can make mm-hmm. it work and, and it's going to be timing Mm -hmm. You know, and and once we get this piece in, then we can go to the next one and then the next one. And then we can, 
you know, implement that plan. So absolutely. So let's go into part two. We're going to try some of John's and Lauder Ale's more, I guess, uh, regular uh, core beers. Sure. Or some that you brew more often. Sure. So we're going to come back here in a second and try some of those. So welcome back to section two of the Lauder Ale episode. We're going to do things a little bit differently. We got we got two flights here. We got eight Lauder Ale beers we're all going to go through and talk about. And John will be describing them for you. So let's just jump into the first one here in part two. We got the El Nina here. La Nina. La Nina. It's been a long day, John. La Nina. So the one that I talked about the La Nina. Nina. Well, the La Nina is a mango habanero blonde. So Hot. <laughs> that's what you said before. Why would you even try it again? You already have tried it. You didn't. Because I need I needed my expert opinion. He needed that. He and needed by expert, thing. I mean Ooh, hot. hot. <laughs> Ooh, hot. H a w t, hot. <laughs> so this is your mango habanero. Yep, it's a blonde beer blonde. base and with a mango habanero. Additive to it. So, and this is your number one seller? Second. Second. The number one would be coconut, coconut, porter. coconut which is coming up soon. So what kind of inspired you to do the La Nina? Well, I was uh, doing a homebrew competition where it was a spiced and or fruit. And you took another sip, too. Didn't I you? did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate it, but I kind of like it. John, I, I'm not no <laughs> bitch, okay? But, I'm not no but bitch. But I'll go for it. <laughs> they ain't no bitch in my blood. They ain't no bitch in my blood. These colors don't run. <laughs> so it was a spiced and or fruit beer competition, and... I couldn't really think of what I really wanted to do, and I actually had a friend who was doing a um, mango habanero uh, buffalo wing competition thing, nice. you know, where, where if you eat them, eat 10 of them in 30 minutes, get your picture on the wall or whatever. And I watched him with the with the tears and the snot coming out and everything. Sounds like torture. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, dude, is that good? He goes, the first bite was awesome. He this goes, is fantastic. Yeah. 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 After that, it was it was yeah. horrible, but it just kind of like got me going on uh, on that kind of train of thought that you know I could dial down the spice, maybe not enough for you. That's okay. But uh, I'm a, I know I'm a minority. <laughs> Mike, I'm a minority. Could, Mike could be eating banana peppers and he'd be crying. That they're too hot. <laughs> Even even black pepper is a little too hot. Yeah, for it's right? a little too yeah. hot. The problem, I would never little, eat banana peppers too. anyway. They're delicious. They're awesome, Why wouldn't you? They're amazing. I put that shit on my pub sub. Like I, I said, I'm, I everything. know I'm a minority in this, and that's okay. Put that shit on pizza. Oh my god, get out of here. Well, I mean, in this room, it's actually two. I, I'm with you on that, man. Thank you, David. <laughs> so we're minorities. Well, we're, we're minorities. We're I'm united two, front against Mike. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you, you Whatever. Mike privilege. <laughs> but it was it was one of those things where I'd come up with the the additive, and then we were looking to to do additives to our beer. So Absolutely. they they asked me to bring it in, and we tried it on the blonde, and it just kind of it worked. Hit. Yeah, it works. It's yeah. hot. It works yeah. real good. Yeah. It's got a nice like back burn. It's delicious it's definitely juicy when you try it you get that juice of the mango and then it kind of finishes hot Mm -hmm. which if that's your thing that's your thing it it turns out well the hot is like yeah it's not up front i mean you get it up front not but it's not like spicy up front it's like you get the pepper right and then you drink it it's sweet and then it finishes pretty spicy leaves a little burn a little burn yeah which is good because that's what you're expecting you should be expecting a little anybody the thing this is the big thing about pepper beers and this is what I, I everybody always goes off and like I don't like pepper beers because they taste they're too hot whatever if you order a pepper beer expect it to be hot well like, at least expect some it heat. to be hot like that's at what you're ordering heat. but we, we have people that come in and that's all that they drink all day it's great I think it's good it's because good. I expected it to be hot it's good if you're if that's your style mm-hmm. you're gonna get what you're, you're you're you know you're ordering you're gonna get yeah. the mango you're gonna get the the, the, the pepper spice the but burn. Uh, as far as I know it's not burn your lips sure make you tear Agreed. I agree, I agree. Yeah. You know, it, I agree it's with not you. that kind of hot space where you can't or really where, 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 where you can't even will drink a whole bottle. I drink, well, yeah, I drink well, three you can't finish night. that that beer. Yeah. You know, ninety percent of the people won't be able to finish that. Super I'm a weird. I'm a weird ten percenter, I guess, because I, I love, love Ghost Face Killer. I drink yeah. it out of the bottle. It's like, Ghost Face Killer. Killer, whatever. But rookie. 
as I was saying, I've been to Twisted Pine Brewing and I've seen on the wall the like the wing the wing style, like the hot wing style competition pictures of people trying to chug Ghostface Killer at Ghost at, at Twisted Pine. That's disgusting. There's people in tears, red face. Like dying. That, that would be me. That's that would be me. <laughs> I'm I'm, I, I like and that's some the wall heat, of success. Not... <laughs> like, yeah. The wall of success. It's, 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 it's just how you look at it, I guess. Yeah. The wall of failure doesn't exist. The wall. Those are the people who actually did it, <laughs> and they're like on the wall with crying and blood, and like they're fucking ready <laughs> to like, die. <laughs> like, you know, they're like bloodshot faces. They look Where? like they're gonna die. Like they, their eyes are all red and shit. And I'm like liquid just pouring out of like, every yeah, orifice. And are they sweating when they cry? You can't tell. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, do you guys have a? Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like, do you have a limit on Ghostface Killer? <laughs> and they're like, no. And I'm like, can I get like a 12 pack? <laughs> I literally took 12 home with me and I went to a party and I ripped the labels off and put it in a koozie and I walked around with it and I was Wait drinking it. Somebody to I was drinking it, it and you. somebody goes, hey, what are you drinking? I'm like, dude, this great fucking beer. You got to try it. And I hand it to him. I don't tell him anything about it. And they take a big swig and they're just crying and upset because it's like <laughs> habanero peppers in their face. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sorry. I guess you can't handle it. I don't know. It's a great beer, though, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't taste anything. I can't see. I can't there was, smell. There was multiple parties where I drank two or three of those in one night, and I think they're delicious. I'm the only one, though, and I know that, and I'm a big minority in that. But I love Ghostface Killer. I think it's actually a good beer. I also cook with it, but I think it's a good beer on its own. <laughs> Cooking with it sounds delicious, though. <laughs> All right. So after that epic tale. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Back to we real have, uh, life. beer two here. It's the brown. John, which one is is that one? That's our Bush Brown. Bush Brown. It's uh, English Brown. Don't mind me, guys. It's a little on the uh, semi-sweet, nutty brown. Don't take this as an insult because it's not meant to be. Reminds me of, of like a Yingling or Newcastle. Really? I, to I where I I wouldn't. I would say more. It's very light. Newcastle is an English style brown. You get kind of like that brownish. I wouldn't say Yingling. You know, nuttiness to it. I wish Mike didn't it. backwash mm-hmm. into it before we all tried it. <laughs> <laughs> this what this episode is turning into, Jeff. <laughs> I I honestly enjoy it. You got that that nice malt sweetness on the back end. Yeah. But I wouldn't say Yingling as far as that. No. Part. Newcastle. Newcastle I, for sure. I thought Newcastle didn't have as much malts. Yeah, Newcastle exactly. doesn't have as much flavor. It's not Newcastle's right. a we, much it milder. Much, brown much, much let's, more. Let's go yeah. back. It reminds me of a Newcastle. Okay, okay. That, that's fine. We'll say that. We'll he say did say that originally. I did say that yeah. originally. But like, so like a brown ale reminds you of that. that correct, I, correct. I think I do beg to differ on that. But uh, honestly, okay. honestly, it's meant to be a compliment. <laughs> oh, okay, it's meant to be a compliment. Honestly, it's delicious. I actually really. That was, those are one of the ones I didn't try yet. So I'll it's, a, to, it's a it's a truly one. like European or English or, or whatever style of brown ale because like m- we've talked about Maduro. Maduro is a great brown ale, but it's this is like an actual real style of brown ale. This hits style perfectly, and that's that's um, one of the ones I I love my stouts and porters and stuff. But in the summer, well, we talked about yeah, dark beers. Summertime, they're a little a too heavy sometimes. Sure. That one. Holds me over until it gets a little cooler, either at night or yeah. when oh, the I'll, season turns a little cooler. I will crush <laughs> like a 10% Imperial Stout in 100 degrees. I did it earlier today. I mean, I do it, but, <laughs> <laughs> I do it, but, it but it's not always the best thing. That's really do. good. That, that actually holds me over. That brown ale that brown is really good. It's pretty spot on. That hits style perfectly, and it hits it because you said an English style brown ale, and it hits it perfectly. It's dry, sweet, every everything you expect in a brown ale. Still light, still approachable, and he's very drinkable, but, but, but still good. with that very chocolate drinkable. and caramel. Yeah, that caramel, that, that caramel comes through in the finish. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what holds me over until mm-hmm. I can get a, a good porter or stout. <laughs> until you get something to where it fits the the time of the the, the, yeah. the temperature. See, my, or, sure. <laughs> my thing is, I love stouts or imperial stouts when they're warm. So like, oh, I like to uh, drink my beers. Uh, warm a hot also. day makes my beer a little bit easier to drink mm-hmm. to me. Because it's like it'll make it it'll make it hotter in like six minutes instead of twenty. Yep. <laughs> so. so the next one we have up here, number three in, in section two, is the coconut porter. Oof. Yeah, that was nice. 
so and, and good. That is no, I don't best. need to say anything else. That those is our best just, seller. Yeah. <laughs> those people, oh. We didn't even. <laughs> oh. the, the two I mean, we, we, we like, officially oh. didn't try it yet, but we've already had this, and it's amazing. I mean, you get nothing but coconut. The nose is phenomenal. It's fantastic. The nose is amazing. Like, that's one of the best coconut porter aromas that I've probably ever smelled. You can hold it like a foot away. That's up there. Smell. That's up there with yeah. like last snow as far as a coconut aroma and nose. Sure, uh, absolutely on, on a beer for yeah. sure. And we yeah. were just at Funky Buddha, and I'll, I'll tell you that this was, this is up there with that. Like this is it's as not par. good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of roast. Great creaminess. The coconut comes through perfectly, and it's not super roasted but it's not super artificial it's like right. very real coconut right. and good the nose is incredible that's probably my probably my top ear here is the coconut porter i mean you get it on the nose it's potent but not overwhelming you want any dave and and just just honestly <laughs> it's all good it's all good okay it's all good but no on on it it's those damn fries <laughs> loaded fries oh my god uh, honestly, on the nose, it's amazing. You don't even, you don't even have to put it up to your nose, and you can smell it from like you're just pulling it in, and ah, oh, so it's amazing. it's a five out of five on the nose. Yeah. Like it's perfect. And then and then when you taste it, I mean, I'd give it up there in the fives area. You know, somewhere yeah. around there, it it hits it hits what exactly you're marketing it as. It's a coconut porter, and it tastes exactly like that. Exactly so, what it is. The coconut's sure. amazing. In it. Like, it's uh, great. It's great. And you didn't get it with that artificial coconut, and I hate that artificial coconut flavor. That suntan lotion. That mm-hmm. fucking right, right. Who knows what it is? That that smell that Dave loves that I yeah. hate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know what suntan lotion tastes like, but the second I smell it, and I can't even give you like a description of it. That smell. That smells like you're drinking fucking suntan lotion. You're like, okay. That's not it. That's not the beer. <laughs> That's not, what I'm That's not the for. beer. That's not it. Here he comes. If we recall, I didn't like the smell either of that you one in particular. Love that beer. The I was beer, drunk as fuck, so I don't ask me. I could drink the beer. I said I did not want to smell the beer. That's I could fuck. drink it. Fair enough. I'm so, not throw him under the bus. He did say that. But beer that, num- that coconut is, is awesome. Uh, my second favorite beer here, near so and dear to my heart. One and two, for you. What? what? Yeah, we're doing one and two right now. Coconut's number one. This was number two. One of my uh, favorite shows on TV of all time. I know John's a big fan of, oh, of, of this one. Of this one. Great. Oh, yeah. Tell us what this is, John. This is a Hefeweizen named Heisenberg. <gasps> <laughs> Enough said. Mike right? thinks it's the best show on TV. No, second best show on TV. Second best. <laughs> what was the number one? Sons of Anarchy is the best show on TV. <laughs> You're an idiot. Was on TV. Well, I was going to say was. You're the one that's bitching about. How, I'm not even getting into this. This is about Lauder Game Ale and not of House of Cards. Thrones <laughs> and then Vikings. And then I'll give you Sons of Anarchy after that. I mean, it's it's such a strong banana flavor. It's light, super refreshing. It's it's really fantastic. I hate Hefeweizens because of the clove. And that is all banana with like just a dash of clove. Just to, just to give it kind of like that spiciness to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, That's we spoke fantastic. about it earlier. I think it's a, an American style Hefeweizen. It's it's, but it hits perfectly for that style. Um, the traditional German has a lot more clove than this, right. which is yeah. which is unappealing to most American palates. Which is why you know Floridian doesn't have that clove. That's why a lot of you know Florida or American Hefeweizens don't have that clove in there. It's just an unappealing flavor. It's very like pungent. It's very on your tongue it's in the back of your throat it's mm-hmm. and so it sticks with you too it sticks with you for the yeah. entire beer and then probably half of the, the next half of the beer next one at do. least half so <laughs> at least um you know it, it it eliminates a lot of that clove kind of i don't know lingering flavor and it gets a ton of the banana and a natural banana that not that flavored bullshit banana and, and it, yeah it, that's a sure. that's a banana from the yeast no and and yeah and yes, exactly yeah. and, and it's it, straight malt hops it hits style yeast. it hits that style perfectly, hits style. perfectly yeah. for what we're looking for and and i said on a previous episode that wraps uh that wrap brewing up in st pete as a great f of Eisen. and this is very similar to it and so is mia with miami vice they have a great f of Eisen as well um but they hit they hit perfect style for what mm-hmm. american palate is and, yeah, and, with and, the and, banana, and it's, it's still kind of a broad you style get a little bit oh, of the yeah. clove yeah. out you know, but you so, keep it so unfiltered you and you keep it summer you keep mm-hmm. it light 
but it has just all the flavor that you need. And great. it's a great beer. Thank you. It's fantastic. Well, also, also, just ends. like Breaking Bad. <laughs> also, the name yeah. Yeah, the p- puts it up a little higher for you. Right? Heisenberg Hefe. Just name all your beers after Breaking Bad. Do yeah. it. <laughs> Do I it. Want, we'll get I want the Jesse here, right? quote unquote bitch whatever. Oh, no. We, we, Yo, actually, we actually make bitch. a we, we actually Both made a, a, a J. Pinkman pale ale. <laughs> yeah. right. Why didn't you call that bitch? Just, <laughs> just <laughs> bitch. yo, bitch. Jesse said bitch. We, we more, were, that was half of his lines. We, we were gonna call it yo, Mister White's wit, but it just ended up being you know, Mister White's wit. Mister White's. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mr. Yo, White. Mr. White. I dig it. I dig Yo, it. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> bitch. Listen, bitch. <laughs> what a captain. I don't know. We'll get into that another time. Everything you said was bitch afterwards. Whatever, bitch. <laughs> 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 so this is part two. We're going to take a short break and go into part three. And we're going to try four more beers here from Lauder Ale. And we're back for part three of the Lauder Ale episode. We got four more beers, guys. It's a really long can, break. Can I had you, to can pee you guys, everything. I took can you guys? Of... You need to pee? Yeah. I don't care. So <laughs> edit that out. No, I'm going to leave it in. I'm edit that in. out, man. Leave it in. Let me ask you to edit it out so that you can't. How Just bad? Don't. From 1 to 10. What? You have to pee. Me? Yeah. 6. You can wait. Yeah. All it right. Can, it, it, it you can, can wait. 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 You can wait. We're going to go through this fast, yeah. We'll make it so, right. John, what we got number 1 here of the uh the last flight here, which your flight paddles are Awesome! Yeah, they're so cool. Thank you. They're very <laughs> cool. They were locally designed. Um, friend of the brewery said, "Hey, I can I can make those for you." You know, they're, I'm gonna take uh, a picture. They're little propellers. I already took a picture. Did you? Well, you can take another. Okay. I took mine on right. Snapchat, so it's already gone. So it's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's already gone. So what, I John? What do we have uh, for number one here? We have our Monkey Road Red. Um, it's a Irish red and. Actually, when we brewed it, we tasted it. After it fermented, and we said, yeah, we made it red. Let's do something different. So we dry hopped it with some Simcoe and gave it that nose to it, that um, almost red IPA kind of taste to it. <laughs> Jeff loves red <laughs> IPAs. But as far as the IBUs, it's still counted as about 16 IBUs. That low? That low. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but Look the dry Darren hop. Right, the the, the, the dry hop actually so brings delicious. out quite a bit of it. <laughs> so it wouldn't, and, and this is just me being me, but this wouldn't be a big request, but it probably wouldn't be too hard to tweak this to make it an Imperial Red. Imperial Reds need to come back. But <laughs> I haven't tried it yet for the record. We'll, so. we'll like, good night. Good night. Yeah, any, any, uh, any, yeah. Imperial any, any Imperial Red. red. Like I, Mission I like Carrick. Is one of like my favorite beers, and it comes out never, but just imperial, <laughs> which is nice. Yeah. Imperial reds are just an in, in, insanely underutilized style, and it is. Well, they get they get too Americanized to where they're they're extra hoppy, and they're not. Well, they're like they're, a, they're, they're, they're almost like a red double IPA, which right. I'm like okay with because I like double IPAs and I like sure. reds. So, right. but I do like reds. For the record, so let me try it before I, you guys can continue talking. All right. So the reason it. why I like that is exactly what I just said. It's not like a lot of red ales are very hop hoppy. They they tend to oh this is a red ale we're America we're just gonna add a whole bunch of hops and t- taste just like an IPA. That one is very balanced. You get a little bit of a little bit of hop and kind of like the middle, but it, like the caramel from it kind of really smooths it out to where it's like. You drink it, it's smooth, you get the quick hot burst, and then it's, it mellows out again. Well, it's it's brewed as a traditional Irish red. And that's and what then dry hopped. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're not yeah. getting, you're, so you're not getting all that bitterness it's in the boil. It's sweet in the finish. Yeah. yeah. You, you, get the, you get the hop forward on the nose, and that's. And then and then you get the malt, yeah. and then the, the hop sweet. finish. You, you just yeah. dry hopped it? You didn't actually brew it with, like, extra hops in the boil or anything? No, we, we brewed it as a traditional Irish red, which right, is a very dry low hopped, hopped right. low hopped beer, and then dry hopped. So that's it. why the nose is very the pungent, nose is very very high. in your face, mm-hmm. not floral, but like savory. It's like a it's a it's a good nose, but um, and then it hits with that that caramelly and that sweet finish, and it, it's it's a good Irish red for sure. To me, that's what Irish red should be. Oh, absolutely! This is what a good 
craft Irish red should be. Correct. This is like when you get other Irish reds like Smittix and other things that are mainstream and, and underproduced or overproduced and undermade, I guess. It, this isn't this is a great one. This is this actually hits yeah. what the style is supposed to be. Thank yeah, you. That's that's exceptional for sure. So number two I have no idea what that the hell that even says. We have our Gulf Stream cream. Okay. okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that though. says Creole. This is Creole. <laughs> I couldn't read the handwriting, but it's So I I had this before and in preference I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably meant someone should tell you I love this beer. It's super light. What style is this? It's, it's a cream ale. Cream ale. Like what I really like about Lauder Ale so far is like most of your beers. A good portion, maybe not all of them, but a good portion are like really light and refreshing. And being in South Florida, like the heat and everything, like you're getting not only the light, it's refreshing, but you're getting a lot of flavor too. Right. And you're not getting overly hopped to where you're sweating, your mouth's dry. You're not getting a boozy beer that's going to make you, you know, black out before you leave the brewery. So like everything that we've had here so far is really not only hitting on style, but like fits the area that you're in, if that makes sense. No, I understand no. that, yeah. but but it's also we're taking these from all over the world. Yeah. Where we're taking different styles from all over the world. You get your brown from England, uh, Porter, England, uh, Hefeweizen from Germany, uh, the red from Ireland. Cream is is a pretty much an American style. Right. Uh, the saison is a uh, Belgian, which we're going to get into. Right. You know, so it's not just. American IPAs or American beers, where we're trying to do stuff from, from all yeah. over. Yeah, staying true to that style mm -hmm. and then just right. adding a little maybe a twist occasionally. Yeah, and it's an additive. Yeah, you know, if it doesn't hit very well, maybe we'll we'll try something on it or with it, like with the red. Yeah, um, the we, we just tried the the dry hop because when yeah. we tasted it, it was, oh, it's a red. Right, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. and how like do you, how do you know, un unless well, somebody's and, coming in specifically for a red ale, you're really not going to sell. That's like what I'm thinking. That person does because not exist. Not, dude, I'll <laughs> tell you, I'll I mean, tell you I when I see a red on on the board because you don't see them that much. Right. You just but see for a me, red, I'm like, like oh, let me try the red. Right. Like you know? I'm in, I'm in like the retail section of 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 craft beer where I'm not brewing and I only get what is available to me, and I. I will tell you right now, there is n not that many consumers that are looking for a stylistically perfect beer True. unless they're going to a craft brewery. But I'll tell you that there is a huge proportion of craft beer enthusiasts who go to a brewery just because they're stylistically perfect. Oh, yeah. Which True the, that. the yep. disconnect doesn't make sense to me, but it exists. Absolutely. And it's, it's super weird because like... This, you know, like a, a, like you said, a red ale being just a red ale, that beer would kill it in a brewery because somebody would come in and go, wow, that beer is a perfect mm -hmm. red ale. But if it was on sale at WOM and, and no, no one would no buy one it, would, no one everyone, would buy it. Do it, they would just, everyone they would be like, oh, over. red ale, it's a red ale. Cool red ale, whatever red, red ales or red yeah. ales, you know. It, it, and that, it's, that it's not, I like, like ciders, but like that, exa <laughs> and like I, I tried to make that sound as like pretentious as possible because that's exactly what it is. But there's like yeah. people who are like eh, red ales or red ales. <laughs> a, a, a brown is a brown. Give me the but, thing but that has really Reese's true. peanut butter cups in it. I like that, and, you know, and it's like <laughs> But it's like that that's the battle because I used to do product at, at a world of beer and Darren still does product at a world of beer. And the, the battle we fight is like, do you want to be stylistically perfect with great beer or do you want to be what are people going to buy? And and you well, made that well, as decision far as a retail. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys want to sell stuff that people are going to buy, yeah. but you, you don't want to sell stuff that nobody's going to buy. Right. But you made a decision where you said, this beer is good. It's stylistically perfect. But we want to make it something that someone wants, someone right. desires, somebody looks for. And that's honestly what you have to do now, nowadays in craft beers. You oh, have to course. say, you know, this beer hit style perfectly. Now, how can I make it appealing to the masses, to mm -hmm. everybody? And right. you guys killed it with that red ale. I still have not tried the cream ale. I'm just, I've been <laughs> too busy rant. talking. Yeah, but no. It's okay. Honestly, with as far as like the red ale, red ales come out most of the most of them turn into a core beer. But like the hardest thing with like when you were brought up brown ales, mm -hmm. right, that's a seasonal technically for us. Well, well, brown ale has 
uh, a, a very wide yeah. variety to them. They, they can be somewhat unflavorful with a little bit of nut all the way to mm. super nut. sweet just put some nut with no it. nut in it. You know, and it, it's just that there, there's so much. I know, no, no. That wasn't meant to be funny either. <laughs> that wasn't even meant to be sexual. But, 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 but no nutty Fuck kind of flavor. We're at a table full of dudes. Of course, it, it's going to be it, funny. It, it, <laughs> and it came from all right, let's put some nut in it. He, he said, uh, he no said nuts. nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. <laughs> but I, I mean, uh, most, uh, not most, but there are quite a few styles that, that can have that wide variety to them. Yeah. All the way from oh, sure. almost watery to almost blow your face off. And yeah. it's still within style. So you can be stylistic, but what does somebody want? There's like well, a handful your... of those styles. Well, well like, like your brown ale. Awesome. I, I would, awesome. I, awesome. I love it, that brown well, Here's the deal. Brown ales, I want to see year round. And I would Florida, love to see brown We make it year round. round. Well, and that's amazing because if you look at breweries, like we'll say, we'll say Bell's. Like Bell's brown, best Bell's brown. Bell's best brown is a really good you, beer, though. It, great brown ale. You only see it seasonal. Well, a, a lot of it has to do with what sells, exactly. the space that you have available, yeah. And and the the product that you're trying to move and what does move. Oh, I agree. So, I completely agree. Like, you know, I as as a brewer, as a brewer, I'd love to just brew the beers that I like, and <laughs> we would all love sells. that, right? <laughs> if it doesn't sell, I'd I'll probably, sit around and I'd drink probably it. be here all day because I'll you, sit you seem to have a good it, palate. You know? <laughs> you <seem> to be <laughs> good. So, <laughs> well, it's like Duck Rabbit. Hell, all, all they do is we specialize in dark dark beer. That's and fine. that's and what we do. I and will that's drink this every day. <laughs> but but I like breweries that do that, that that stand up and say, this is what I'm going to do because this is what we stand behind. Yeah. Oh, either, sure. either we like it or this is all we know or whatever it is. But I like that and just kind of bringing it out there and Absolutely, seeing yeah. who will actually buy it. And, and they sell it. I like Duck Rabbit. I think they sell more I, but, because they stand up for what they brew. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? I'll say this. I'll agree with that to an extent, but I'll also say that Lauder Ale brews so many styles, and they do them stylistically well, that you guys are, are very diverse in what and, you and, present. And that's, that's what we like to and do because so, we like it's not all like kinds of beers. So. It's not like you're standing up and saying like, we're a German brewery, so we do German beers. You do every beer, and you do it well, and you do it – to the point that you want to be as close to style as, as possible. And then on the styles, you realize that there's a little leeway on what you can do. A little wiggle you room. You give it a little one, wiggle yeah. room. Mm -hmm. And there's a handful of styles that are like that. Barley wine. What What is a barley wine? Sure. Anybody know? We're all, you're a brewer. We're all craft beer people. I've drank it's, a it's thousand from, barley wines. From, 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 it's what anything, is a barley wine? Uh, anything, uh, right? It, well, it, not light really. Light bodied, dark, bar, dark, super heavy, super light, 12% or 8%. They're all barley wines. There's no definition of a barley wine. Right. It's, so, it's kind of like a double IPA without double all the IPA. hops. Another without one. Without all the hops. Another one. and that's But that's another style. Double IPA can be up to 12%, 8%, super hoppy, dry hopped. Bitter, not bitter, sweet. The, there's well, so they're, much they're, they're lee, in, the, in the style leeway, guidelines, and they're you know? all within the style guidelines. So there's a handful of styles that give you a ton of leeway. That the, give the, the you ones the that, opportunity the, the ones to that I make like, them your own. The ones that I like are something like um, uh, there's a style, um, a section called Belgian Specialty. And it's something that doesn't so that's fit just into a Belgian strong any, dark ale with some but no 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 Belgian but, but, whatever. but it doesn't yeah. fall into any other category as far as a wit single For sure. triple sure. quad it doesn't fall into any just other it, Belgian just, whatever it's Wait, basically yeah. uh, what was coming out was anything that you can brew with a Belgian yeast. That's so awesome. it was like a Belgian specialty category. Sure. I'm gonna you do know? I'm gonna do Mike a favor right now and just. I'm going to ask you, so Belgians, are they simple yet complex? The recipes are <laughs> because simple. Because I want to give Mike yet. a real, I want to throw him a bone here because he's been getting heat for this for a long time. The recipes. Just full of shit. I don't get heat for nothing. I'm always right. <laughs> as, 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 as far as I, I said before, the, the recipes can be very simplistic, but the taste is very complex where you get a lot of flavor off just the yeast itself. <sighs> All right. You hate being right, don't you? I love being right, Jeff. I'm walking around up there. That's, like, that's like, 
Someone's on the it, ceiling. Yeah, I'm it always, sounds like they're going to fall what? through, right? I'm always uh, wrong. Setting up, actually. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm I, I would love wrong. to get that on And, and, and it, it always helps. sounds like somebody's fallen through. You're like, I thought it was thunder again. <laughs> no, no that, that's <laughs> not true. When, 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 when you start to see, you know, some of the, the uh, plaster come, you know, that, that's when we have to leave. Like, oh, shit, we're caving in. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, we got more beers. Let's we got go. more beer. We got two more beers. So the third beer here in part three is the Sizzler. Ooh, just now is it? Holy wow! Shit. I yeah. told you. Wow! Oh my God! Are they kicking the roof oh in? God. No. no, no, they're probably just walking around, like placing stuff. They're down. literally just yeah. walking. That's it. Hey, they're just walking. Oh. <laughs> don't We're recording don't, here. Don't don't hit the broom yeah, up there because like, it will just room. fall in. Mister <laughs> Mister Heckles would be having a heart, a heart attack so right this, now. So the Sizzler is not the buffet, but it's the saison. Correct. I have Correct. It right here, it's amazing. It, it is. <laughs> Why do you get so upset that I said that? It's amazing, I everybody. Got it right here, it's amazing. Because <laughs> it's, it's so, so good. good. <laughs> I, I I will say like I love saisons. Granted, Aileen loves saisons, so I've grown to love them just as much. Oh man. my god! <laughs> <laughs> is, is it is the mics picking right, it up? Somebody, I hope so. Yeah. Can somebody correct? You can correct me. You're you're a well established. I brewery. might you be can able correct to correct me or or agree so with humble. me. Whatever. I have said on multiple episodes now that Saison is a traditionally sour style. And then, mm, and then, I, it, but it's on the lowest mm, end of sour. I wouldn't say sour. I would sour. say more of a wild yeast, like a farmhouse Saison is a wild yeast yeah. where you can pick up some funk flavors and maybe some sour notes, but it's not traditionally a sour beer. Okay. Traditionally like that. As, as no, far I, I know. As I, I mean, know. I know it's on like, if you're going to rate sour beers, I would it, it, have it said it have, was the lowest end of sour. It, it, it can have some it of could. that sour Depends notes on the I always, to it. I always grouped it in with, with the sour styles. Well, like a farmhouse Saison is a wild yeast. Super. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's it, literally it, a wild yeast. And, and some of the ways that they did it was in the barrel, in the, in the farmhouse open fermentation and, and from it. batch to batch year to yep. year they didn't know and they just took whatever they had so you can get some of that lactic acid which would lean you towards that sour style right but most of most of it comes from like the lighter i obviously lighter bodied easier drinking lower alcohol initially but also you get that funk like the reason why it's called farmhouse i mean sometimes you get that funkiness from it yeah you get that well, wild get that yeast. Funk. you get a wild <laughs> yeast from like horse poop and shit so <laughs> yeah. it's like i get well it. there's but, stuff that's floating around yeah. in the air if it's it, open fermentation that damn spider and <laughs> yeah well jolly pumpkin with their spider but at the same time this honestly when it, are, are they no, having a fight for real <laughs> they're having a fight <laughs> it's a fucking wwe i was gonna say that there's like, some mma wrestling. going on upstairs yeah. you i haven't know? watched wwe in like two weeks i'm i'm, I'm you're, you're, you're chosen running for it I'm you driving for it. you driving for it? this man this man loves his wwe i love my wwe but uh, my name's jeff i love wwe as far as the farmhouse goes. Yeah, yeah I kind of got out of that after I turned 13. So, you know. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. Damn. Whoa. John got 20, some fire. I'm 27 and I still like it. So. I actually got out of it when I was 13, too. I got back into it when I was 26. My name is Jeff. I love WWE wrestling. So so it's the second half of your your 13-year-old. the second half of my life. You get that funk, that little bit of funkiness to it. I mean, the whole goal was to make it more drinkable. Lower oh, alcohol, I mean, like. yeah, I'm a familiar. I'm familiar with what a farmhouse is. Are you sure? Yes, and and majority of them are approachable, and they're not sour. But I always group them in with the sour, just purely based on the fact that they're wild yeast. Yeah, and I can you're say, right. And they you're have right. the capability right. to be sour. But correct but yeast, and there is, are sour is, saisons. There are. You're right. You're right. Of course. Yeast. But so, but but a wild yeast is different than um, lactobacillus or uh, Brett. Oh, absolutely. Um, that those are Brett bacterias, me, so, but but yes. those are bacterias that actually make it sour. Where the wild yeast is still a yeast that can give off some lactic acid. Yeah. Um. And 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 I understand where you're coming from. Where where it leans you to that sour, that lactic acid kind of taste to it. Um. And. But technically, it's not really right. a sour because well, it's not. I would I would say to me, bacteria. if somebody was like, I really love sours, 
I wouldn't have given him a, a, a saison. No, it's, it's a little was sweet. Like, I really want to get into sours. I would maybe start them start on, some them on a saison, and then move them into like an American Wild, and then move them into whatever the next. You know, from goes, that point, from that a, point, a they're goza, all pretty vinegar, uh, vinegary. Yeah, a, a goza is kind of like a half sour, right. half beer. But you know, you have like you have your saison, which is super approachable of a, of a wild yeast. Mm-hmm. Very approachable. I mean, dark saisons are almost sweet, almost caramely, earthy. From it. And, we we, and we just did our super our first three barrel batch of that one too. of a dark saison. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Nobody does dark saisons really anymore. Not, not really, not really. <laughs> really uh, cool. uh, we we had experimented a couple of times with but, it. But you know, you have your dark saison, you have your light saison, you have those styles that are are wild yeast driven They're They have the capability of being a little sour, a little tart, a little, mm-hmm. but then you have, you know, they're light and then you can move into American wild, which is a little salty, a little, a little tart, mm-hmm. a little bit, little bit of vinegary. Maybe a touch. And then yeah. you move into, you know, the actual sours. The actual and sours. So, right. To me, I've always grouped saisons into sours, but I, I, I can I've see said it. it a handful of times, and people are always like, "They're not a sour style." It's, it's, I, but I can see it because with the with the wild yeast, they can give off some lactic acid, which mm-hmm. is what you get off of a sour, is is that lactic acid. So I, I can see where you're coming from, but as far as the way that they're fermented, then they're not really the same kind okay. of beer. Just tell me he's wrong. Just Jeff, you're me. wrong. I, I don't. I, mind. I can see where you're coming from as far as taste. I don't mind being wrong. I'm Saison, depending on the brewery, saisons can go into sour esque kind of yeah. style, and then they can kind of not I'll also be in. into the sweet. Right. And that, that's another saisons style style that, or, or a double that, that is pretty a open. A double player there. Right. Also, it pretty much. Yeah, well, it really well, pretty much the like the older the style, the the wider. The, the the scope of that style or the because, more American the brewery is yeah <laughs> yeah but 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 you had so many different breweries for hundreds of years making this style so one yeah. from from one end even in one country one from one end of a country to another they're going to make it totally different oh, yeah. just because of their climate or their yeah. their ingredients or their yeast absolutely and, and their water too so yeah, hence with Germany, with every city you go to, yeah, they every have every their own well, Germany, yeah, mm-hmm. which is every city limit has has their, their brewery. Brews. Germany is super segmented in the way oh, they yeah. brew beers, oh, and yeah. and German and styles to me, um, the American version of German styles are very similar, but that's because that's only what we get. And then I've had people have gone to Germany and been all over, and who have said. Dude, you get different beers in every town you go in. Oh, yeah, every single town. And and to me, like we get Tuger, we get Weinstefan, or we get you know the the mainstream German beers, the biggest ones, the ones that have been around the longest. But we don't. I, I went to Munich. Uh, I spent a week in Munich, and I tried every strong lager, every Hefeweizen they had. This was before I was into craft beer, and I just was going for whatever the high ABV beer was. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. What, what's your what, highest what, ABV? Hey, what tastes great? What do you the, like? This is what I want. Yeah, what do you like? And they're doing 32 ounce beer steins at 12 percent strong lagers. Yeah, you're just you like, know. Oh fuck. And I'm like, oh. and I'm gonna drink it for real right now. How many beers you have last night? I think just three. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll tell you right now that I had a friend who literally blacked out off of two beers. Yeah. And, and ran away from us, and we lost him in Munich. <laughs> and we had to call the Munich police to find him. Because, and, and we There's did. There's an American loose in Munich. And we did. Help us, help us. And we found him, and he got brought back to our hotel for us. He didn't even go to jail. They just brought they him just, back because Munich's stupid awesome. Stupid Americans. And they're like, these Americans are crazy. But this guy got blacked out off of two beers, but they were 32 ounce, 12 and a half percent strong sure. lagers. And, 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 and when you drink them, down, them both, he was putting them down right. like, like he, he would, them down, like, like a Bud and Light. And then we're going to the next bar and we're walking through, you know, the beer gardens. We're going to the yeah. courtyards. Right? And next thing you know, David's gone. Just running. <laughs> What What's happened? up, David? <laughs> and he's gone. He just got and, called out. And and he he ended up he was like getting in a scuff like a fake scuffle with one of our friends, and he accidentally like cut his face on my buddy's belt buckle because they were wrestling. No, no. What was his face doing near your buddy's belt buckle? They were wrestling. Oh, they were wrestling. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh was, public was it, was square. It, was it WWE style? <laughs> it was relatively WWE John style. Cena. <laughs> It was relatively WWE style, but they were wrestling with each other. They weren't happy with each other. They were joking around. 
Does he put him in a headlock? He tried to spin out and he cut his face open on a belt buckle. Gave him the people's elbow. And he got all pissed off because he cut his face open. But this is a blacked out kid after two beers. Right. <laughs> so like he's two beers in and Sup, like David? none of us expected him to react like the way he like was. That. Yeah, he he flipped a switch and, and, and he yeah, got yeah. his face cut open and he had a little blood on his face. Oh big deal. Who cares? And he <laughs> You're in Germany. And he goes, some dirt on he's it. like, yeah. fuck you guys, fuck all you, fuck this, and just ran away. And we're like, all right, see you, see you, man. And then, and we thought he was coming back. <laughs> but he never came back. Genuinely thought, like, <laughs> David's not dumb enough to run away in Munich when none of us have cell phones. <laughs> and he did. He just ran away. And we were in, like, a big beer garden square or whatever. We went to every bar in that square, every bar. Upstairs, downstairs. Have you basement. seen an American with some blood on his face? <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy no we're looking either. for. He ran away and disappeared. And it, six hours later, the Munich police just dropped him off at our hotel and was like, hey, we found him for you. Here you go. Here you Please go. take him out of take, our country. Take him, put him up in the hotel, let him sleep. You're good to go. And I'm like, wow, American police probably would have beat this guy up. <laughs> I'm not taking that out or bleeping you. Sorry, Roger. We have one more beer. Sorry, Roger. We have one more beer, guys. We have the Mamba. The Mamba. I've had oh, the Mamba. Delicious. Break it down for me, John. What is this? So we have our, our Black Mamba. It's a foreign export stout. And this style, we did this one on nitro. It's all nitrogen. There is no CO2 to it. So now that it's been sitting for a while, it might lose a little bit of that nitro character. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> but th this is one that we took to Florida Best Beer Competition, and we got a gold medal for it. Honestly, it's great. That was That's on fantastic. CO two. That makes sense, though. On CO two. Oh, the, so on, you brought it initially on CO2. on CO two on nitrogen. I think it's that much better. Um, well, every every dark beer is better on. Nitro. I believe, that, yeah. Every beer is everything. better on nitro. <laughs> uh, I disagree IPAs. with that. Ninety five percent. Ninety five percent. Don't anything, attack me, guys. Any, any anything from a, a brown and, and darker, and darker, and also a cream. Oh, fuck. Cream to to, oh, to yeah. include a cream, dude. That do to include a cream, cream. on nitro is You insane. shut your mouth. It's delicious. Uh, so uh, good. <laughs> yeah. When, once we start bringing that's the uh, California Cali, Cali creaming. No, no, the it's South, uh, caramel, caramel cream. Oh, caramel yeah. cream. But Fantastic. Nitro, and then occasionally it's like they bring a in game that, changer. That orange caramel cream. Oh, my like, God. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, wait. It's only, it's like 6 7%. Oh. Yo, it tastes like, <laughs> oh, my God, so good. But, no, it but makes yeah, sense to me that this stout won awards because it, it hits style perfectly. It's very roasty, a little bit sweet up front, and then roasty in the finish. And it's, sure. it's, a, it's a stout. I mean, it's a perfect stout. Well, it's, we we weren't style. the only one that entered that that you know style. Yeah. So right, it was uh, it, it was it was big for us. A lot of uh, there was twenty six entries. Holy shit! And the fact that you yeah. just went CO two initially, but then eventually made it into the nitro. The nitro. Yeah, the nitro is honestly so smooth. Fucking but that was delicious. that that was that was a big day for us. How many awards have you guys won? That was the first. That was the first. Nice. Yeah. Pretty nice. That was, I think, the first competition that we entered as no commercial. Yeah. That must be nice. Like, the first, you know, competition you enter, you bring something home, you know? Yeah. Need and, you do something right. And, and what yeah. they told us beforehand was they said, uh, we, we want you guys to be up there. You have won a medal. And we said, well, what is it? And they said, well, we're not going to tell you until the day. So we didn't know <laughs> if it was. Well, well that, that's the thing. They want to announce it. It's their competition. Um, right. they, they don't want us a month ahead of time telling to everybody. Know, you're like, no, you're yeah, right. yeah, because I mean, who can keep their mouth shut, you know? And then, right. <laughs> when you get right. that, you're right, you're right. No one. Hey, guess what we got? Won yeah. this. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but this is what you know. Uh, after you've told fifty people, yeah. you know, don't tell anybody. Someone's gonna open up and tell. Oh my god, guess what they won? I, oh my exactly. God. Facebook it yeah, and everything, Twitter, you know, Instagram. yeah. So it, it was just nice. It, it was a great honor just to just to go up and and we had no like I said no idea what we had won sure. and I'm like even if we got tenth place I was like that would have been really cool uh, yeah, that know? participation trophy yeah yeah, 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 yeah you know? buddy <laughs> hey I got that dead ass last trophy in a golf tournament one time dead ass last huh and you know what and happened it, and it came with the trophy 
Nice. You still got a trophy, man. It doesn't. The, the, it ain't matter. Back at half of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dead ass last, and I'm like, hey, I won something. Thanks for playing. <laughs> yeah. See you next time. <laughs> our, our well, team no, thanks for playing. Uh, we hope we don't see you <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't win anything. <laughs> you Sorry. suck. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it was nice to go up there and and um, I mean, and then just to walk away with something like that. Sure. It was that's, just amazing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to win those competitions. There's so much good stuff out there. Absolutely. To, to, to even place and then not only place, but then take home, you know, first place is it like. Was, but also being a mind first blowing. time competition. First, yeah, your first time first entering time. in is that's, just like. Mm-hmm. That's, that's I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, I, well, well, once we found out, it was like, oh, you got a medal. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, man. You know, whatever. you got the wrong guy. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> look, exactly. you look for John Cena. <laughs> But uh, like now, now we're gonna start doing uh, Great American. Oh, hell yeah! You know God, I, I mean, hope you. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. You know, put out uh, like maybe the saison. Um, oh, you the can cream, put out. You can put out that coconut Heisen. porter, the Heisenberg, the brown. I mean, literally a good portion of that menu yeah. you can put out. And yeah, and that, that's what we're gonna try to do. So, and do just it, get man. just get the hell name yeah. out there too. You know, yeah. so. So we're gonna and it's it, and and for a brewer, it's not always just about the accolades. You know, it, it's not about what a specific judge believes your beer is or what you told him it is sure. and, and they agree with you or whatever. It's it's the people that come in. It's the the, yeah. it's the, the, everyday, people, that it's in, the everyday people. People that come yeah. in time and time again. And one of my favorite things is is if we have a beer that falls off tap, say somebody's favorite beer is the La Nina, the mango habanero. Right. Falls off tap. And I'll see him like as I'm done working, like you said, you know, sweating all day and right. and, and doing all the stuff. And when I see them, they're like, "Hey, man, is La Nina back on tap?" And it's like, "Yep, we just kegged it today. It's back on tap." Yes, you made my day, and that right there makes my day, yeah, makes oh yeah. my week. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I just I can totally made relate that to that. Guy's That's day. the service industry. That's what you, you know? do. And you it's know? like he's like, "Oh, dude." Oh man, it's always so good. Or you know what I mean? You know, compliments like that. That that really, that's kind of what I do it for. Not. I mean, yeah, ex- I, it's the same way with us. Like when someone comes up to me and says, "Hey man, I just listened to your episode, whatever," and like I really liked it. Like it was so funny. Like same mm-hmm. thing. Like it made all the hours I put into it worth it. Even if it's just one person. That's it. If that's I had one person need. come up to me and say, "Hey, your celebrity groom's party episode was hilarious and I loved it." Made all that work, bringing the equipment to Wav, recording it, taking it home, editing it, up, makes it all worth it. And, and it makes it, it, it just drives you, and it drives you to, to do the to next make, one, to, to the next episode, as good or better. Absolutely, that's absolutely that's what we do it for. I, well, I can totally art. relate to that. That's what art is. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, you're you're doing art. Like that's what when you make a beer. That's art. You know, you're. It's cooking. It's it's art brewing, and science, but it's art. You know, mm-hmm. you're. Or you're, chemistry, art, <laughs> science, you're taking, chemistry, biology. You're taking a lot of, of ingredients that other people have used. Everybody has used the same ingredients, everyone. Mm-hmm. But you're taking them and making your own your your own recipe. You're making them your own beer. You're making them your own thing, and you're mm-hmm. you're putting that beer out and hoping other people like it. And that's what art is, you know. Right. And you're doing a yeah. good job with it because. Well, thank you. You're hitting yeah. style. You're which is hard to do. Hard to do. It really is. It's hard to do to hit style because America Americans have a, a skewed style. Mm-hmm. They have a skewed view of what style well, is. Well, hop. Exactly. Everything hop. Exactly. Hop. Mm-hmm. Hop. For hop hop. If, if, hop. If 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 there if there's not enough hops in hop it, throw Kolsch's. more. Hop. If there's enough, throw some more. Yep. And and, and that's what I see on, on a lot of them. Um, and and we try not to do that. We we try to make it to a style. And and like I said, if there's something that we feel that that specific beer needs more of something, then we try to come up with it. Sure. That's it. Sure. You guys do a great job with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy we came here for you're, sure. You're as, far, as far as doing true to the style, I mean, that, that brown ale is – I'm <laughs> glad that I was able to try it because that was one of the ones I didn't try on my flight. I'm, I tried it now in this in this section. Well, a, a, lot, of, a lot of people yeah. overlook it. You know, they, they just say, oh, ales. it's a brown – no. I don't really like browns or whatever, but it's one of it's probably in my top five. It, it Absolutely, like easily. Yeah, I agree with you. Five, my top five here. Yeah, yeah. 
hold you over until that stout season. Yeah, or or, or until I'm cool enough to drink yeah. a stout for that day, you know? Well, Doesn't always happen. But. There's so many people come into World of Beer and they're like, I love, uh, you know, I love dark beers. And I'm like, what's a dark beer to you? Yingling. You know, that's not a dark beer, but right. it's a dark beer to them. Exactly. So, like, you know, brown ales are kind of fitting in that. They're they're not mm-hmm. a dark beer, but they are a dark beer. They're but, but light, they're, they're, but they're, they're light on the, they're, they're light on the caramely, uh, nutty, field. and you know, so that they're not as heavy as an oatmeal stout, right? You know what I mean? So you can get that that nice light mouth feel, but the same flavors. Exactly is, is yep. kind of the, the way I describe flavors, a brown: that chocolate, nutty, mm-hmm. caramely. Oh everything. yeah. So I mean, you, you, the the brown ale is honestly the most impressive out of. I mean, I love all of them. Um, the Goza I thought was a was a great Goza, perfect Goza, Gozilla. Yeah, the Gozilla. It's a yeah. guava. It's a guava. In, Goza. Incredible Goza. Um, the obviously the the coconut porter was fantastic, um, but the brown ale was was the epitome of a brown ale. It was it hit it and then it was a little bit hoppy, so it was it was right where what an American palate needs to be. The the Heisenberg is is fantastic, a perfect Hefeweizen. Nothing wrong with that. As good as Miami Vice, my as good as Floridian from Funky Buddha. I mean, it's it's right up there. It's a great, you know, American half of eyes. And, and, and I mean, honestly, your beers hit style perfectly. They do a great job. So you're doing an amazing job here. And I'm really glad we came here because these yeah, beers are me in, too. insanely good. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and wrapping things up here, I know we, we, we've been a little bit on the longer side here. But, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we made the decision to come here. I know it was kind of last minute. But I want to thank you, John, for, for being so accommodating to us and, and being so welcoming and hospitable and, and just, just great. No, we try and to do that for great, everybody man. who comes in here. Um, you know, but thanks for coming in and seeing oh, us. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. I mean, your beers are fantastic. I mean, I'm just going to be a broken record on, on with everyone on this table, man. We've been, I think, impressed, to say the least. Very oh, great. impressed. Yeah. yeah. You guys are mean, great. I, like, granted, I personally... Didn't didn't know about Fort Lauderdale until I knew I was coming on this podcast. I'm glad I came because yeah. <laughs> it is a, honestly, it's one of those little hidden treasures. Yeah, it's uh, especially it's here. A hidden yeah. treasure. Especially yeah. here. I mean, I'm surprised. I'm I mean, really surprised you guys actually I, made it. We're so. all right. Me it's too. All right, <laughs> right by the airport, but great. Great beer. Honestly, it's, it's, it's the it's, diamond in the haystack. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, but it's, it, you know, it's it, it's. It's like a great atmosphere too. It's not even like it's hidden. I mean, it's hidden. You have to go past the airport. You have to find it. But like the atmosphere is great. The beers are great. Everything's great. People are real laid the back. Tap room's nice. great. We we, we the take people as are they fantastic. are. I mean, somebody can come in, you know, yeah. with uh, no sleeves and shorts, yeah. sit right down next to somebody who just got off a plane, sitting in a three piece suit. You know what oh, I mean? And everybody's this, here yeah. for the same thing. You serve this to a bag in Hawaiian shirts, so yeah. you're good to go. <laughs> but, but, but everybody's here for the same reason, and, and it's nice and relaxed. It's almost like going to, to your buddy's garage. Yeah. You know, yeah. the garage yeah. door it's, open it's and It's really it's rare. I've heard it's it. very rare to, to go to a brewery where the beer is meat style, which sounds crazy. It sounds no, crazy it to doesn't. say that, that going to a brewery where you expect beers to at least be stylistically accurate but that's rare. It's really rare. There's a lot of breweries now, and there, there was this whole big bubble of craft beers, you know, craft breweries opening up, and there's so many that don't hit style, and they don't even. They'll put out a Hefeweizen that tastes like a white wheat. But they'll put but out the a white is, wheat that tastes like in a lager. But the thing you know, is, when, when you when you open a brewery and and you're not entering homebrew competitions, or if you're not trying to enter competitions because that's not what we're into we're, we're not trying to go out and say we won all these medals or whatever yeah. you know if we enter and we win something that's great but the thing is once you open a brewery you don't have to follow any kind of guideline not the, at all. The, the only thing you really have to do is have your customers like your product right My that's best. it which My is brain. probably the reason that it's so rare to find a brewery that still does that might be but stylistically I mean, well you know does beer stylistically I mean, well. like the the la nina is our second best seller what style would that be <laughs> is, is it a fruit called? beer is <laughs> what it a is spiced it? beer yeah. is it a you know what i mean it yeah, doesn't really it? You know, fit yeah. into a category right but people dig it yeah. so my, my favorite that's that okay there's nothing did. wrong with that so yeah i mean going back to you know wrapping this show up man we just really appreciate you guys having us oh, and just being sure. so nice and 
No, thanks for coming. I know, down. I know it's it's could be sometimes a hassle having us schmucks at your brewery. <laughs> Not really. Included. No, okay. I Not really. A compliment. All right. I mean, you guys are great, man. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we came down here. I'm glad that we tried your beers and like you guys are just doing everything right from your paddle boards to your brown ales to your red ales to your your hefeweizens. Everything is what you would expect. It exceeds it. Your award winning beers speak for themselves and it's a little kind of like off the beaten path brewery so i mean you guys are doing a lot right and yeah find them guys for real like yeah. look up lauder ale lauder ale i'll post google, a link in the video google maps finds it you just yeah. have to trust it you're gonna go by the airport <laughs> but it's it's a hidden gem it really is it's it's a great brewery down the lauderdale area go here because it's it's really good yeah so feel free to check us out on facebook twitter instagram YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher on At The Bar Podcast. Got them all. You got, got them all. all. This and you guys gave I've me been. shit at Funky Buddha <laughs> well, for it, so well, fuck the, you. The, well, because the one you forgot was I know. YouTube. It was the, the biggest you one. Missed the right, one. <laughs> I missed the biggest one. <laughs> He's like, uh, all of them except YouTube. Uh, the oh, one that guys, we get 95% of our I views. I forgot from. one. I said seven, there, and there's eight. All right. So anyway, yeah, guys, yeah, check us out. Check out Lauder Ale. I'll post a link in the video in the description. Come by Fort Lauderdale if you're down south. I think one of the best South Florida breweries. Honestly, a big, not not big surprise because your reputation. Big surprise because I I heard of you, but where you're not in Orlando, but hidden gem for sure. You guys are fantastic, and everything you're doing is great. Keep doing what you're doing, and definitely come here, guys, if you come down to Fort Lauderdale. Yep. So, anything you want to say to our audience, John? Check out Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> right by the airport. Come check us out. Yeah, if you're if if you're uh, to your coming to Fort Lauderdale let's go. early for a flight, come check us well, out. Well, no, a, a lot of people do it. Um, they'll they'll you know drop off a rental car, come over here, Uber. Um, you know, if you're in the Fort Lauderdale airport area, um, block off like a couple of hours and come see us. Okay, your two year anniversary coming oh, yeah. up. Two year anniversary. Two year anniversary. I'm sure there's a lot more things coming down the pipe works that you guys are doing. Beers are plenty. Beers are plenty. All right. Thanks again for listening and watching, guys. And one last time for day one of our SoFlo Summer Tour. We'll see you at the bar. <laughs>